Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over the benefits of space exploration. So let's get started. Now, one of the main benefits of space exploration is satellites. So if we look at satellites, first of all, it says that the first artificial, i.e. man-made satellite was the Soviet-built Sputnik 1 and was launched in 1957. Ever since, satellites have become so commonplace that nearly everyone uses one every day. Today, there are over 3,000 artificial satellites in orbit around the Earth. And in actual fact, this number is very outdated now. The real number is just below 5,500 artificial satellites in orbit around the Earth as of April 2023 when filmed this video. And this number will likely increase as time goes on. And the picture here just shows you an example of an artificial satellite in orbit around the Earth. It then says satellites have many applications. So we have things like communications including the internet, weather information capture, long-term climate change monitoring, navigation for example GPS, science discovery such as the Hubble and James Webb Space Telescopes, the International Space Station, the ISS and many others, military observations such as spy satellites, cartography like Google Earth and other similar satellite mapping tools, entertainment, primarily satellite TV services such as Sky, and lastly pollution monitoring, for example, the ozone layer. And there are some other applications that exist as well. So what I would recommend is that you try and remember two or three of these uses or applications of satellites for the exam. And I just want to touch on navigation a bit more in terms of GPS, which stands for Global Positioning System. And a good example of something that uses GPS would be Google Maps. And I'm sure most of us have used Google Maps before to try and find some where that we've never been before, or to try and just see where a particular location is or how far away it is. And I'm going to just show you a quick simulation to help you understand how GPS works. So if you have a look here, it says that one technology that is in common use is SatNav, which uses a global positioning system of satellites. By receiving radio signals from a number of these satellites, it is possible to determine your position anywhere in the Earth to within a few metres. How does this work? Well, it says that a sat-nav receiver compares the time it takes for radio signals from different satellites to arrive. So if we click play here, you'll see this big sphere mapped out, and it says both the satellite and sat-nav receiver have very accurate clocks. The receiver can measure the time it takes for a radio signal to arrive from the satellite. By also knowing how fast the radio signals are travelling, the receiver knows how far it is from the satellite, but it could be anywhere on the surface of this sphere. And here's the surface of the sphere that goes all the way around. If we click play again, it says the receiver can receive radio signals from several satellites. By measuring the time for the signal to arrive from a second satellite, it knows it is also somewhere on the surface of this sphere. However, there are many places where the two spheres meet. A third satellite is therefore needed. So with this sphere of radio signals from the second satellite overlapping with the sphere of the first, then we get this region where the two overlap, and that's where we could say the receiver is, but there's lots of places the receiver could be, so it's not very accurate. But if we take a third satellite, then it says here that when signals from a third satellite are received, the receiver can determine and display its position. In practice, more than three satellite signals are received to fix the position with greater accuracy. But you can see that even with just three satellites, with this third sphere overlapping the original two, we get this point down the bottom where all three spheres overlap, i.e. all three radio signals overlap. So the receiver placed at this point where all three signals overlap would be able to display a good degree of accuracy for the possession of an object. And this is the basic idea that underpins how GPS works. Going back to the notes, now another main benefit of space exploration is space technology. And it says here that satellites are not the only beneficial technology to arise from the exploration of space. To support manned missions into space, many other technologies were developed and now see various applications back on the Earth's surface. So what we're going to look at here is a list of different examples of technologies that were developed for space exploration that now have applications back on Earth in everyday life. So our first example here is infrared thermometers and it says they were made possible by research into infrared telescopes. We then have water purification systems that were developed for long-term space missions and these are now used to help treat kidney disease. We also have advances in robotic arms used in the space shuttle program were adapted to improve the functionality of prosthetic limbs. Scratch-resistant lenses were originally developed to prevent the visors and spacesuits becoming scratched by lunar dust, i.e. dust from the moon, and microscopic space debris. Enhanced UV protection in sunglasses was also originally developed for use in spacesuit visors. And we now see these scratch-resistant lenses and UV protection in most sunglasses nowadays. 
Moving on, we have the space blanket, which was developed by NASA for the Apollo missions. And you might have seen a space blanket used in a TV program or in a movie, where someone's maybe been in an accident and they're sitting in the back of an ambulance wearing a space blanket to try and trap the heat in. Or if you've ever done a distance run before, such as a marathon or a half marathon, they sometimes give you a space blanket once you've completed the run to try and help you to maintain your body temperature, because sometimes your body temperature can drop quite significantly once you've expended a lot of energy. Next, it says that extensive research into heat shielding and fire resistant materials for re-entry have been adapted into building and aircraft designs. NASA's advanced firefighting equipment is now standard issue. And another one that might be quite familiar to you here is temper memory foam, which was developed as a crash protection material. And you might have seen memory foam in things like shoes such as sketchers or in pillows and mattresses. And we've also got portable cordless vacuums which were designed for the Apollo missions to allow astronauts to collect dust from drilling moon rock. Another one here is freeze-dried food, which was also developed for the Apollo missions. It also says development of solar cells to provide power to satellites is now used for electricity generation, and solar cells are the things that make up solar panels. We then have remotely operated ovens developed for the International Space Station are now commercially available. And lastly, MRI scanning has benefited from advances in imaging software and technology developed for imaging the moon and other celestial bodies. And we've then got a fun fact here which says Velcro is commonly thought to have been invented by NASA for the Apollo missions. However, NASA's use of the material merely popularised it. Velcro was in fact invented in 1948 and commercially available by the late 50s. It then says to pick three examples from the list above that you think you might remember. So for the exam, I'd recommend that you're able to describe three of these uses of space technology. And lastly, it says if you want to read more about these advances in technology, you can visit this NASA link, which is called homeandcity.nasa.gov. And if you go to this link, you can explore a city or you can explore the home to see how space technologies are now used in these places. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.